Hello everybody, this is Adam from Jim's IT, Penrith and Blacktown once again. And welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to walk you through installing Home Assistant, which is an awesome home automation tool. If you want an in-depth version of, or a walkthrough of Home Assistant with a bit more detail, we'll do that later on. But for now, I'm going to do the install of it using Linux. Ubuntu and Docker. Docker is one of my absolutely favorite tools that I've come across lately. I follow a creator called Network Chuck. All hail Network Chuck. He's taught me so much. I've followed through so many of his videos and he introduced me to Docker. I knew about Docker a little bit, but not too much. Basically think of Docker as a virtual machine, but really cut down. Uh, think of it as a folder and each computer so my my ubuntu server has this folder inside of it and in that folder has different pages and each of those pages could represent a container and each of those are a docker container so i've got a little machine behind me that runs my home assistant it runs Pi-hole, it runs a lot of other little tools within Docker containers. And it is so cool. They've all got the same IP address. It does so much work for me. So we're gonna do the install of the Docker here. Um, so let's dive in and have a bit of a look. As you can see on the screen, we've already got um, WSL loaded. If you haven't got WSL, it's pretty easy to uh, set up. A WSL is Windows. is Windows subsystem for Linux. So what that means is you're running Linux within Windows. Pretty cool, isn't it? That you can run KO Linux, Ubuntu Linux, any version of Linux that you'd like within, within your Windows environment. Hey, we'll look at that another time. But if you wanted to install WSL, you'd have to make sure it's enabled. And then simply what you do is open up another terminal window or a PowerShell window. And then you'd go WSL install and then your breed of Linux that you'd want to install. But if you went to that straight away, it would just that little command, that WSL. So if you have a look, WSL dash dash install would install a new version of Ubuntu for you. And then you can play around with it. The reason I'm doing it in here in WSL instead of connecting straight to my Ubuntu machine is to actually just demo it to you. I'm using Home Assistant, it's all set up, it's working great. I'll walk you through my little setup soon. It's not the biggest, but I'm building it. So we're in my little desktop here, Avatech, who am I? We're in Ubuntu. So the first thing we need to do here is One thing I forgot to mention before we go about Home Assistant, it is open source. So what that means is that if you want to get under the hood, if you want to download the code in the back end, if you're feeling that adventurous, go for it. Download it, edit it to your heart's content. There are forms, there are um, Reddit sites, there's everything, anything that you can imagine to get you started and doing that. Look, I, I don't. It's not something that I get under the hood and look at. I use what's there. I use its integrations. There are a crap load of integrations. Uh, it will get you going. And so let's get going with the installation here. The biggest thing that we ha are doing in our Docker environment is using the host network. So the host is the computer that you've got to install it on. So for example, the host network at this point is my desktop computer. So we want to make sure 
that the Docker container has access out to my network instead of its own little environment. So a lot of the times when you're doing virtual machines, it will create its own little network. So that information can't get out. And that's what a lot of people like myself love having. So if we're testing things, if we're downloading things, it's in a nice little safe sandbox. So if something goes wrong, we can just get rid of it. It doesn't connect to our network. But with Docker, sorry, with Home Assistant, we want it to get out to our network. We want it to be able to view our devices and to scan any device on our local network that we can control with Home Assistant. So it's so important that we use uh, the host networking. So let's get down. Right. And the first thing we need to do is get Docker installed and we'll make sure it is installed. So let's have a look in our WSL instance. Is Docker installed? No, look, Docker's not installed. That's not a problem. Let's get this puppy installed. I'm, I am going to be lazy here and I am actually just going to go copy and paste. Now, make sure when you're dealing with stuff like this, make sure your sudo command is there or you're not going to really be able to install anything real here. Pop in your password. Off it goes. Once get Docker all ready and downloading. Linux, beautiful. Just downloading everything it needs to do for Docker. Then the next thing we need to do is simply get our Docker container ready for home system. Pretty cool, hey? And that shouldn't take us. Look, look, it's done already. So the next thing we need and we want to do is The next thing we need to do is literally install our Docker image for Home Assistant. Now, remember, when we're doing this, we need to make sure that host networking is enabled here. So I'm just going to grab my little script here, my Docker script. Let, well, well, let's just make sure Docker is here and ready for us to do what we want to do. Look, Docker's there. We're not getting the same error that we got before. So let's clear that screen, make sure it's nice and clean. You don't have to do that. I just prefer to do that. Um, let's go grab the command for this. I will leave the commands down in the description for you. Uh, so you're able to grab... Yeah, I can't talk tonight. Uh, so you're able to grab them. Uh, so let me just grab that here. And we'll walk through it together so we know what we're working with here. So, again, we've got our sudo command to make sure that we run um, as administrator. Then we've got Docker, our Docker instant, our Docker container. And then we want to run it. And then we've got the name of our Docker container, which is Home Assistant. It's a privileged install. We don't... Um, we, we, we want to reset equals, unless we stop it, we don't want it to reset. We just want to keep it running. Our time zone, mine is Sydney, Australia. So that's where um, I've got my time zone set. And then we've got our path here. Then we've got the path for the configuration file. This is where, look, I, I keep that as is. It can be edited to the normal configuration file. But it, that, I've never had an issue with that there. This here is our biggest important line here. That is telling our Docker container to use our host network, not use its own little internal network, to use the host network. If that's not in there, it won't pick up any of your devices automatically. 
I went through so many instances of installing this, trying to work it out, and it was driving me batty. And then I put it on another machine, one of my lab machines. It worked beautifully, and I'm like, well, what am I doing wrong? It was, it was that. It would just didn't have access to the host. And it's going to grab the latest container. I guess you could compare it to an ISO, but it's a working container. It's a working image. We don't have to install anything um, from that path there. Let's get cranking. Right, so it was unable, look, look how quick it's going there. It was unable to find that first image locally, so it's pulling the Home Assistant itself. And we're not doing anything. That is literally going up, pulling down all the information that we need for this container of Home Assistant. <laughs> this is what I love about Docker. You can do this with anything. You can do this with the Ubuntu install. You can do this with the Kali install. You can do this with absolutely anything, and it's just there ready to use. Oh, mate. Um, this, this really does excite me, and... When I did see Network Chuck do this and how excited he was getting about it, I'm like, oh, man, really? How can something like this excite you so much? After I play with it so much, mate, I can see why it excites Chuck. It's one of the best tools I think I've used in a very, very, very long time. And I did pause there for a little bit because the last few um, packages down here were just taking a little bit of time to come down. Now, that is all installed on the machine. Well, no, sorry. I'm using the wrong terminology. That container is all ready to use on your system. It's, it's, it's all set to go. Now, the next thing we want to do is make sure it's working. So let's do a docker ps. Oh, I've got sudo. Sorry. I keep on telling you guys to use it and I forgot it. There it is there. So our home assistant has been up and running for 46 seconds and it's all there in our little special container. It, you can have lots of things running there. I'll just make it a little bit clearer for you, the guys there. So there it is there. So that's your container ID. So that's your, think of a big manila folder or something like that. So your little tabs down the side. So that's your little tab name. And so you can flick that open and each of those tabs will have its own little entity running. And so the next thing I, I guess we need to do is jump in the Home Assistant. Right, so if we have a look here, this is the browser. This is within my browser on my local machine connecting to the container we just installed. As you can see here, the port number that we're connecting to is 8123. And the IP address here is whichever device you just installed your home assistant to. So wherever your container is located. For me, it's on the local host because it's on my machine here. We could do that in two ways. We can go local host or we could go 127. 0 0.0.1 and that does exactly the same thing so we go there wow there's our home assistant screen there's our home assistant screen all ready to go so i didn't need to install anything i didn't need to do an iso i didn't need to pull down things create different scripts it did that all for me so let's start, get going with create our home let's enter my name my username's fine Enter yourself a nice secure password. You can put in your home area if you want, your address. I'm not going to put my address because um, I don't want you guys to know where I live. I'll put Sydney. <laughs> um, that does help a little bit with when you're running different um, automations. So if you're running a weather automation or you're running a light automation, for example, that does help with that. Now, you can help the guys that develop Home Assistant 
by sending them some basic information like I normally do. Like this stuff is for free. So if what you're doing can help these guys fix things, why not help them? Um, like statistics data, diagnostic stuff, basic analysis, none of this stuff is really going to hurt helping them out. The only thing I don't probably share is the usage. In a way, you could say that that would probably help more, but I guess I've got the tinfoil hat on and I really don't want to share that. Now, next. All right, we're all set to go. And now if all goes well, what you should be seeing on the screen now is your Home Assistant first screen here. The only issue we I've found with WSL is that it doesn't auto-detect your devices on your network, which is really weird. I'm not sure why I've tried so many little things. I've tried to bridge it. I've tried to bridge the network into the dockers. It still doesn't do it. You can easily still come into, into here, into settings and add your individual devices. So again, devices, um, down here, you will see if I can get rid of my little image, add integration. And you can add your individual devices, but it's a bit of a pain that it doesn't find what's on the network, what's on your network. Now, if we were doing this sort of away from WSL, it would look very different. So I'll load up my other device and I'll give you a look on what it would look like. So this install is directly on Docker also but it is done on a Linux server, so a Ubuntu server. And as you can see, it's picked up a lot of my devices on my network straight away. It's picked up my NAS, so it gives me a overview of what's happening with my NAS. It's found my printer. Um, it's found my um, switch. It's found, again, my NAS, and a few other things are there as well. Um, so, it, look, it's not terrible that it hasn't found your devices. Uh, you just have to add them yourself, but... Yeah, if anyone out there knows a way with WSL and Docker, uh, so I can actually view your devices, that'd be great. Well, guys, that was a very brief intro to learning about installing Home Assistant on Docker. If you enjoyed it, please let me know. Please comment below because it really does help me. It gives me that little bit of confidence boost. I'm still new to the whole YouTube channel and that type of thing. So any advice, anything that you'd love to know, that'd be great. I'm going to continue doing some Docker stuff and showing you how powerful Docker is. Uh, I'm also going to do some short tech tips for different home users. But guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon.